Hello, everyone. I'm Anthony Gismondi for Gismondi on Wine.com. It's October 14th, and rain and frost are slowly creeping into the Harvest 2020 picture across British Columbia. But today, we've got a great day to follow the grapes, and we're heading to the Similkameen Valley. That's the next valley west from the Okanagan. We're dropping in at Orofino Vineyards to talk to co-owner and winemaker John Weber. John, how are you today? I'm doing great, Anthony. How are you? I'm really well. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see the blue sky behind you. Uh, yeah. We think it's raining like crazy in the lower mainland, but you haven't had a lot of rain. Um, yeah, beautiful day again here today. Uh, we actually, yesterday was a little bit spotty. We got our first real rain in months uh, in the middle of the day, but then it, it, it stopped and the sun came out and finished, uh, finished up beautifully too. But yeah, we've been very fortunate this this fall, uh, September, October so far has just been terrific. We've been hearing a lot about the quality of the vintage. I know winemakers don't like to talk about it before it's uh, in the bottle, but uh, the grapes look terrific around the province. How are they looking in the Similkameen? Yeah, I, I mean, I've our our vineyards are are just I I've I've commented for two months now about how healthy everything looks. The, the vines look great. The the grapes look uh, terrific. We've got a lot of um, like a fairly decent sized crop. It's not a huge crop by any means, but um, whatever's hanging is is beautiful and healthy. Lots of small clusters and small small berries too. So super intense flavors coming up, I think. Today we want to talk to you uh, specifically about Cabernet Sauvignon. I know you're going to pick that uh, today yeah. uh, for our viewers. Of course, Cabernet Sauvignon is a late ripening grape. So is it, it, will it be one of the last you pick now? And tell us a bit about Cabernet Sauvignon and farming that. Well, here at Orfino, we've got, uh, we have three separate cab vineyards that we work with. Um, uh, we are picking the Passion Pit Vineyard uh, today, which um, was planted back uh, in 06 uh, for us. Um, and actually, uh, three years ago, we actually purchased the whole property and have uh, planted a lot more cab and some Syrah to finish out the 10 and a half acres. But we have two acres of producing uh, cab uh, here um, in what is certainly one of the hottest sites in Canada. Um, it, it sees some of the first light and some of the last light of the day. Uh, it's got perfect exposure. You can see the rock face right behind us. That's Orofino Mountain. Um, and it just heats up the grapes. Uh, and, um, and that's necessary. I mean, you know, we, it, it, is a, it isn't the easiest grape to grow because it does need that heat and a little bit of length. But if uh, it's farmed right, um, we seem to be able to manage it. And, and uh, even in cool years, like 2011, for example, is actually one of our favorite cab, cabs that we've ever made. So it's pretty cool that we can, we can pull that off on, on, um, on those cooler vintages. For our viewers that are looking in from around the world that know Cabernet, what, what kind of sugar levels will you be picking at today? Well, we'll go anywhere from 23 to 25 um ideally uh sometimes we uh the 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 grapes experience a little bit of shrivel near the end and there's nothing really we can do about it besides pick it um and i'm i'm not looking for um 25 27 bricks that's just not our style we don't play around with the, anything so whatever i get from the vineyard into the winery is what I have to, to, to play with so or to, to work with. So I, I, it's super paramount to us that the grapes come in at proper sugar levels and, uh, and ripeness levels. Um, I, uh, acid doesn't really scare me in, in, in this. Um, we always seem to be able to, to, to finish it properly. Um, the soil types here uh, at, at the Passion Pit is, is uh, well, you can see behind me the scree slope. Um, and and the, the the vines right up against the mountain. Um, that's the producing block right now that we're picking. Um, so it's all angular granite. Uh, the, the the pit, the passion pit was actually it's actually named. It was a former commercial gravel pit. So there are sections of this place. I'll just kind of turn around here so you can kind of see the length of it. But this going back there and over the ridge is actually the the commercial pit. So um, lots of gravel, not a lot of soil content, very harsh conditions, um, but terrific for varietals such as Syrah and Cab. So 
Um, that's what we're, we're we're working with right now, and uh, and it's it seems to be working. We're pretty excited about this. This will become the cornerstone of Orofino for years to come. Well, we haven't asked anybody this. We've been sort of focused on picking grapes and getting them to the winery. What will happen in the vineyard in the next couple of weeks after you pick? Does it have time to settle down? Is there things that you need to do in the vineyard to yeah. sort of put it to bed for the winter? Yeah, so all we really do is, besides the manual work of taking bird net, netting down and, 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 and putting everything away uh, and blowing out the irrigation lines, the what the vines need after right after we pick today will 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 irrigate heavily and try to make sure that the vines don't go into winter stressed so if i can get you know if i can get another week after the grapes are picked um the the, the vines will have time to absorb a little bit of water and don't go into the the winter um with dry uh, stressed trunks, trunks in particular, uh, um, because yeah. then the wind and the cold of uh, the similkamine um, can potentially uh, uh, split, um, split the, the the trunks. So that's the main thing that we have to consider: is make sure that everything gets watered down properly, and then uh, and then we're good to go. Hopefully, we're good to go. Now, lastly, these Cabernet, they'll head over to the winery. Will it be a pretty standard yes. uh, fermentation process and then aging? Like when will it actually yeah. get to bottle and when will we be able to drink the 2020 uh, Cabernet from Passion Pit? The general protocol here is is that the, they get picked into half ton bins and then we, we, I mean, we can, we just truck them over. We're only like three blocks away from the winery. So uh, it's a very easy, gentle move over there. And then um, they get uh, de-stemmed, lots of whole berry uh, into one ton fermenters and then a uh, four or five day cold soak. And uh, which basically these days we can just leave them outside because the temperature is pretty perfect for that. And, uh, and then um, we will warm them up a little bit in the winery and then inoculate. Uh, we do a lot of wild ferments here at Orofino but um, the thicker skinned, higher bricks, uh, reds, we still continue to inoculate. Um, and then it's all hand punched. We do two or three uh, uh, punch downs a day. It's very low tech uh, sort of um, winemaking style. It's, uh, we, we, we just try to, 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 to stay in touch with the grapes the whole, the whole, through the whole, throughout the whole process. And then um, pressed off in our old press after maybe 20 days, 25 days, uh, and then uh, into barrel. Um, and basically they'll maybe get racked once or twice, maybe uh, over 20 months, and then into bottle, unfined, unfiltered. That's generally the protocol since we've been doing it since 2005. <laughs> so. oh, okay, I said one last thing, but let's just mention organics because it's such a big part of the similkamine and what you've been doing for so many years. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Costin is the certified organic capital of Canada. So the highest concentration of organic farming happens right here in our tiny little town. Um, and um, we have, we are not certified organic here, but um, I mean, as you can see here, I'll just see if I can flip this around here. So you don't have to look at me the whole time. There, how's that? So I'll just show you this. This is part of our young block of Syrah. So these are two years old. They look terrific but you can see like it's not uh beautifully manicured and um, what you might yeah. see in, in 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 magazines you know but this is like the the cornerstone of uh very healthy healthy grapes and, and I, I i always say it doesn't matter what it looks like it just matters what it tastes like so um and it that that has taken us a, a few years to 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 kind of understand that and uh and and now that that's how we're doing things i think it's uh, it's better and better so yeah like just a lot of hand work a lot of work we've got a small crew here that works super hard um and uh, yeah they're pretty they're pretty uh they're pretty proud of it John, uh, I'm an old guy. I, I, I think it matters what it looks like because when I started out, we all wanted that dark earth underneath the vines. And now when I see that, I get really, really iffy and edgy. And when I see that desert scrub under the vines, I said, okay, that's the kind of vineyard I want to be in and that I want my grapes from. So keep it up. 
Uh, we really appreciate your time today. I know how busy you are for joining us on this uh, BC Harvest video in 2020. Today we followed uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, the first that we've seen, and we thank you so much uh, for getting us up to date on Orofino and what's going on in the Similkameen, and uh, good luck with the rest of the harvest. Uh, pleasure being here with you, Anthony. Thanks a lot, and have a great day. Cheers. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching our BC Harvest series for 2020. Check our website, gizmoniumwine.com, as we add new episodes over the next few weeks. And follow us on social for immediate updates or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you all next time.